It is that time for another Tesla stock update as well as a look ahead at what we have tomorrow for economic data and we actually have economic data coming out tonight from China that could be important to our markets as well as tomorrow. Now here in this video I also want to take a look at Tesla where I think Tesla is going from now until earnings and then following after earnings. The sooner you get this information the sooner you can position your portfolio for Tesla, I think the better off you are going to be. Because you're at a very important point right now. I mean, Tesla, if you get $2 higher from here, heading into earnings, you could see a colossal rally to the upside. Vice versa. If things don't go quite as planned in the markets, you could see some big downside from here. So I think this information could not be coming at a more important time. So, Let's go ahead and get into it. We have a lot to unpack here in this video. I'm not going to waste time on the intro. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you guys like to make money, if you want to reach your financial freedom and your goals as soon as possible or at the bare minimum. If you own Tesla stock, let everyone know by hitting that like button. So let's go ahead and get into it. So first things first, let's talk about what happened on the day today. I find this interesting. You've had a total change of, I guess, positioning by the markets for a different reason. So a little bit of a backstory. Over the past couple of days, ever since this Israeli conflict has started, you have watched bond yields come down, even though we have gotten pretty hawkish Fed speak i mean they they really haven't said like they're thinking about cutting anytime soon they're still saying we're probably going to raise rates one more time there's no justifiable reason from the fed's point of view of why bond yields are falling inflation on ppi as well as cpi here today have come in stronger than expectations but bond yields continue to fall that means that investors were buying the bonds well, now today, the investors are selling the bonds again because of CPI, maybe. I think that's probably the thing that makes the most sense. But what's happening in equity markets today? Very weird. So investors are no longer buying the bonds as safety, as a flight to safety, I think, because of this Israel conflict. But they are now buying big tech stocks again. They're buying an Apple today. They're buying a Microsoft today. Well, not as much Microsoft, but definitely an Apple today. Whereas investors are back selling Russell 2000 stocks. So you're getting that same rush to safety, rush to quality as you have been getting over the past couple of days in the bond market. But now it's again happening with your big tech names. So let me be very clear. You want to see a broad participation in the markets. You want to see your beaten down dog stocks start to do well, like your Russell 2000 stocks. That's not happening today, but it's better to see big tech names be the flight to safety equity markets instead of the flight to safety being the bond market. So I'm actually a little bit more bullish on the markets after what I seen today with the CPI report and how the markets positioned their portfolios. So again, the best thing you want to see for markets right now, if you're a bull, is money going into your beaten down dog sectors of the markets, mainly your Russell 2000. That did not happen today, but you don't want to see money going into the bond market right now. Until inflation comes down a lot, until the Fed really U-turns their speak, any big rallies in the bonds, it's going to be seen as a fear move. So it's not a terrible thing today that money went into big tech stocks. Again, compared to the alternative, which could have been the bond market. That's your ultimate flight to safety. Tonight's economic data could also be very important. This is going to be your inflation rate year over year out of China, your inflation rate month over month, PPI year over year, the balance of trade, exports, and imports. Now, a lot of people were panicking when China's CPI came in negative because this might not, I mean, make sense to a lot of people, but deflation is worse than inflation. Deflation creates a a bad spiral if you really go into deflation that's the last thing you want to see you'll take inflation over deflation any day of the week 
okay? And just just so everyone knows, deflation, once people start to cut lower prices, then those companies can't afford to pay as many workers, those workers get laid off, they can't buy as many products, thus affecting basically everything. Nobody's safe during a deflationary environment. So that's kind of that circle that you don't want to see happen. China was getting there. China has seen deflation at least a little bit, and now they've started to see a little bit of inflation again. Now, your expectations for tonight's reading is an inflation rate year over year on the headline basis of 0.2%, inflation rate month over month at 0.3%. Uh, year over year would be a little bit higher than 0.1% that we've seen last month and month over month as 0.3% is the same as what we've seen uh, last month and if you guys take a look at this little chart these yellow bars are deflation and people didn't really notice when the month over month was in deflation territory but when your year over year actually went into deflation that's where people started to say whoa uh China might have a problem and that was back here in July and then subsequently in August we had 0.1% so that year over year is probably going to be the most important thing to be watching for China's inflation report and if they get another deflation report uh, yeah you could be in for a problem even in our markets now PPI year over year you're expecting that at negative 2.4% that is wholesale prices that's not exactly the greatest sign as well balance of trade expected at 68.36 billion exports year over year expected at negative 7.6% imports expected at negative 6% so you really want to see See, your exports and imports go higher. They've been so negative recently, like negative 15 plus percent for a long time now. And this is a lot of why investors have felt like China is just slowing down. They're going to head into a recession. That's why China is doing uh, stimulus measures as of right now. That stimulus announcement from China recently, I believe that was two days ago, was actually a pretty bullish catalyst for Tesla. So we'll see when we get details on this, what kind of stimulus will be uh, you know, put out into the economy. I do consider that a positive catalyst over the next month or two. When we get details, that could really be a big deal for Tesla. As Tesla does about a couple hundred thousand deliveries for China in any given quarter. China is Tesla's second largest market, eventually will probably become the most important market for Tesla. As it stands, the US is currently number one for Tesla's market. Now, in terms of Tesla's earnings, Morgan Stanley put out their opinion on this, and Morgan Stanley has Tesla's EPS estimate at 56 cents the current eps estimate on wall street is 65 cents so even morgan stanley they have the highest price target on tesla throughout all of wall street at 400 dollars per share within the next 12 months they still expect lower eps than wall street so it's one of those situations where the bar is so low that i don't see tesla reacting negatively to their numbers themselves now, cash flow. This one could be important. Morgan Stanley says we expect just under $1 billion of free cash flow in the quarter, roughly flat on a sequential basis versus Q2. Morgan Stanley goes on to say, we agree with the consensus that the performance of Tesla's stock following the print will likely be driven by comments on the forward outlook and how that may move consensus up, down, or neutral for 2024. Meaning, in English, it really doesn't matter what tesla reports as far as their numbers as long as nothing is too crazy or different right if margins were to plummet obviously investors would not like that probably not going to happen eps if that plummeted investors probably not going to like that that's not going to happen as long as nothing is too crazy different from the last report and doesn't get worse then investors are really going to focus on those forward-looking statements. Does Tesla give us a little bit more insight on demand? Tesla usually does on their earnings calls. That's something that will be important for Tesla stock investors. The timeline of the Cybertruck. 
whether or not we get the announcement of the Cybertruck on Tesla's earnings call will be important. Now, my personal opinion is something like this. We could get the Cybertruck delivery event announced at any time. It could happen now. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen by the time you wake up. It could happen next weekend. This weekend, I mean, it could happen on earnings. I don't think it's going to happen after earnings. So I think from now until earnings, at some point in that time frame, you're going to get the Cybertruck being announced. The the I mean, closer we get to earnings, it looks like it might actually be announced on earnings. That's kind of what it's starting to feel like now the cyber truck is something interesting i've talked about this before but i want to elaborate it elaborate on it again the cyber truck we've known about it since 2019 investors thought it was coming long before it was actually here now big money does not assign too much value to things that are down the line especially when interest rates are five and a half percent We've known about the Cybertruck since 2019. It got delayed. A lot of people are like, hey, we'll, we'll see it when we see it. We'll put that into our models when we do see it. But we haven't seen it yet. So any of the bull pieces you, you really see on Tesla, a lot of it does not have any sales numbers incorporated for the Cybertruck, any halo effect incorporated from the Cybertruck. None of that. So I think that is something that we can expect in 2024, that it's going to be an upside surprise. Now the markets are forward looking. So when we actually get a definitive date for the Cybertruck, investors are more or less forced to price that into Tesla stock to try to figure out what kind of value that could add to Tesla's franchise. But until we get a definitive date and a definitive delivery start date, then you don't have that affecting tesla stock the cyber truck right now very minimally priced into tesla stock i would argue so i do think it's safe to say what's actually going to move tesla stock again is not the numbers it is going to be what is said about the cyber truck you guys can see this based on last earnings the stock moved down a little bit it moved up a little bit a couple dollars in both directions even though margins came in a little bit better than expectations uh revenue b eps beat everything looked fine looked great better than expectations you the, the stock actually reacted upon elon's comments about further price cuts now i think the markets are conditioned for comments on price cuts we've seen tesla cut the price of the model 3 and the model y and that did not stop tesla at all tesla stock has soared since that has happened i mean the 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 day we got those price cuts tesla stock was green so i don't even think news of further price cuts to come would move this stock all too much we've seen that recently it hasn't affected tesla i think the stock is conditioned at this point for bad news and bad news is somewhat already priced into Tesla stock. And you can see the forward looking comments are the only thing that affects Tesla upon earnings as of as of recently, as of the last earnings. But this was also when Tesla was at $300 per share. And I think that is important to also point out. Tesla stocks $264 per share. Now, I would like to point out as well that we don't know what exactly is going to be said about the Cybertruck. I think at the bare minimum, we're going to get the delivery event date and probably the delivery start date for Tesla, which is probably going to be like a week or two, couple weeks after the uh, delivery event itself, which I imagine is going to be um, early November, probably for the delivery event, delivery starting for the Cybertruck late November, early December. That's my timeline, what I expect. I don't know if Tesla is going to provide guidance on Cybertruck deliveries for next year. If they do, that's something that could also be very bullish and impactful for Tesla stock. But we just don't know if that's going to be announced or if that's going to be said. Now, on a technical basis, I'm sure it's obvious to everyone, Tesla stock is very, very bullish. You're just in this uptrending channel ever since you hit the lows back in January. Sure, it's been up and it's down, but you have been hitting higher highs, making higher lows. This is great. But you're also converging with your longer term downtrending line of resistance that is sitting right at about 265. And we've seen it over the past really couple of months. 
when you get to this line, you tend to get a lot of resistance. So I don't expect the stock is going to break out above 265 in a meaningful way until earnings. If, if we do, that's great. Uh, I obviously wouldn't argue with that. I don't think that is going to happen. I think you need some kind of catalyst, some form of good news, the cyber truck to get that break. And then once you get that break, you guys got to remember, Tesla is by far the most shorted stock in the markets. Tesla currently has $22.13 billion worth of short positions on it. If you look at NVIDIA, which has a higher market cap than Tesla and has definitely went through a, a, a bigger rally than Tesla, NVIDIA is short about $13 billion. So Tesla is about... 50% give or take more short than Nvidia. If you look at Microsoft, which Tesla is like a 800 some billion dollar market cap, Microsoft is like two and a half trillion. So what is that? Like three times the market cap. Microsoft is short 13.2 billion. Again, Tesla is 40% more short than Microsoft. There's a lot of shorts betting against Tesla right now. And Tesla really hasn't participated in the rally that we have seen in 2023. Sure, a lot of people say Tesla is up over 100% from its lows that you've seen in the beginning of 2023. Sure, okay, that's correct. But Tesla is still trading lower than where you were back in August of 2022. Back in August of 2022, during the bear market bounce, Tesla stock hit a high of about $315 per share. Tesla stock has really done nothing for years now. And again, I've pointed this out many times. We used to talk about this a lot more. Tesla, if you value Tesla with growth included, Tesla stock is by far one of the most one of the cheapest big tech stocks you can buy. I believe the only stock that is similar in valuation is a is Google. And Google is hitting all-time highs. Now, this is important to point out. A lot of Wall Street only pays attention to PE. You hear PE everywhere. You you hear Tesla's trading at a 68 PE, you hear an Apple's at 30, and Microsoft's at about 32. You hear PE everywhere. When you are investing in growth stocks, it's PEG, P-E, price, earnings, growth. That's how you appropriately value a growth stock. And that's what a lot of Wall Street misses. When you factor in Tesla's EPS growth, because that's what it is, that's the growth you're factoring in is EPS growth. Of over the last couple of years, it's been like 80%. But if you discount that to like a 35% PE growth rate, right? which is a little bit more reasonable along the lines of what you could expect as a Tesla stock investor, then you come to an exceptionally low peg ratio compared to an Apple that really has seen earnings slightly negative year over year and a 30 times PE. Sure, Tesla has twice the PE as Apple, but Tesla is also growing at five plus times the growth rate as Apple. So when you look at it like that, is Apple really the flight to safety? It, markets think so, but eventually they won't. Eventually they will sit here and say, if we are in a slow growth economy, we want to own high quality growth. And that's one of the reasons I'm most bullish on Tesla. Tesla is the definition of high quality growth, self-funded high quality growth. It does not get better than Tesla as far as even like a multi-year growth story. You got robots, you got energy storage, you got cars, you got software, software as a service with Dojo, you have FSD, a lot of reasons to be excited on Tesla. And Tesla doesn't need to dilute shareholders. They sell leases. That's exactly what you want from a growth stock in a low growth economy. So my point here, Eventually, Wall Street will figure this out. Eventually, Wall Street will, will, will assign an even higher multiple on Tesla because Tesla will grow into that multiple. Remember when Tesla had a thousand times PE back in 2020 because they were just turning a profit? Well, 
Tesla's P.E. ratio today is 68. It's not even close to 1,000. Now, should the P.E. ratio be 1,000? Probably not. But could the P.E. ratio be 100? Could it be 150? If Tesla is growing 35% to their EPS, essentially dropping their P.E. ratio by about 35% every single year. Does that make sense? Well, yes. Now, when interest rates are 5.5% and the Fed is raising rates, the markets, they don't give a crap about what you say you're going to do years down the line or what your company could become. I think it's no surprise people believe Tesla is going to be a much bigger company in the future than what it is today. I, I think a lot of Wall Street would not disagree with that. In the, the, the off chance that FSD actually hits, the off chance robot hits, or the off chance that the world switches to energy storage, Tesla's batteries, there's a very good chance that one of those comes true in some capacity or another. Robo taxi. So I don't think Wall Street has a problem with, with that. Seeing the future of Tesla. I think it's pretty clear. I think I think a, a high school kid could understand Tesla is probably going to be higher in the future, more valuable in the future than what it is today. The problem is when interest rates are 5.5%, the risk-free return is... It's five and a half percent. I mean, how people don't want to take risk when your risk free return is five and a half percent. When you add on top of that inflation, which has been astronomically high, which I mean, the, the government data, take that for what you will, real inflation that people have felt is a lot higher than the government numbers, okay? When you see inflation like that, it one makes company earnings less valuable. But it also makes that risk-free return a lot more appealing. I do expect inflation to fall in 2024. Whether or not it falls because we go into a recession or not, I guess that is to be determined. I think we will get some form of slight recession. But when the Fed does start to cut rates, that should help out interest rate sensitive sectors. That should help out housing. That should help out individuals that have been looking to get a vehicle but it's just so expensive to get a vehicle finance that they haven't been able to these things should benefit and tesla is in that category that should benefit when fed funds rates do start to come down this video was about earnings that are coming on october 18th that is going to be next next wednesday i believe let let, let me actually uh double check that Next Wednesday, yes, October 18th, you'll get Tesla earnings in after hours. But why am I speaking of these other things that are for 2024? Well, the markets are forward looking. When you get into Q4, in which we are in Q4 right now, 2023 no longer matters. It no longer matters at all. What matters is 2024 because markets are forward looking. So, all of these things that I have said are things that I expect to happen in 2024. Or for the markets to start realizing. And the markets are forward looking. So they're going to start to sit here and say, hey, what can we change about our outlook for 2024? Should we be assigning a little bit more value to this very high quality company? I think so. If earnings come in better than expectations or at least match the expectations. And we get a Cybertruck delivery event that is announced with a delivery date. That's all I think you need to see to send Tesla well into the 300s. If we get production estimates, like 50,000 for next year, that could be really good. That could potentially send Tesla to all-time highs. Now, am I going to bank on that? Am I going to risk the farm on all of that information coming out on earnings? Absolutely not. But that is the chance. Your biggest risk to earnings is Tesla just doesn't say anything about the Cybertruck. That's where the stock probably falls 5 to 10%. Because if there's nothing to be excited about, if the earnings are so-so, some good, some bad, some just nothing to really write home about, and you don't get anything else that, that really juices the stock heading into the rest of Q4, and as markets look forward to 2024, they won't be able to assign that additional valuation from the Cybertruck. 
that's where you get your five to ten percent down move now why i'm really making this video this video probably isn't going to do well i know a lot of people don't like these kind of videos but I've, I've i've gotten quite a few comments from you guys that say hey tesla stock fell big time after their last earnings tesla stock the day after earnings was down almost 10 percent. a lot of people are like is that going to happen again something else also notable to point out tesla's stock just within i mean the quarter before earnings q2 went from about 150 dollars per share up to 300 so that was an increase of like 101 percent just in that quarter well what's happened to tesla since earnings well since the peak of last earnings until now you're actually down about 12 percent so you you don't really have this big run-up heading into earnings and i think that makes me a, a, a well a lot more bullish for this earnings with tesla if you take a look at the macd the macd is positive but only slightly positive definitely has a lot of room to make a run to the upside and the rsi is at 57.03 again in my book well tech i i should say technically anything around 50 is neutral on the rsi anything above 50 is a little bit more positive anything under 50 is a little bit more negative in my personal opinion anything between like 45 and 55 is pretty neutral anything like 55 to 60 is a little positive anything 45 to 40 is a little negative that's the way that i look at it that ten dollars between 60 and 40 you could say is pretty neutral on the higher end close to 60 a little bit more on the positive on the 40 side on the negative side you're a little bit more negative but that's usually not where a move stops out so right now tesla looks at 57.13 a little bit on the positive side but you really haven't seen that rally as of yet and you, you actually have you've seen tesla stock went go from about 234 to 264 right now you've made a move of, of about 30 dollars and the rsi has barely moved barely reacted so i think there's a lot of room to get an upside move in the rsi be, before that comes and becomes an issue that investors say hey maybe the stock's getting overbought here but again i know i've said this quite a few times this israeli conflict if it gets worse i think is the single catalyst that could really send the markets down 10 to 20 percent we haven't even seen our first red day based on this conflict or since this conflict if it does get worse that could cause a big drop in the markets why because the strait of iran about 30 percent of the world's oil supply flows through there if we got into it with iran which doesn't look likely right now but you just never know then that could send the economy into a very very deep recession if iran were to restrict or completely cut off that flow of oil you would see your gas prices at least ten dollars or more per barrel at least that would certainly push you into quite a deep recession but again that could also be seen as a positive for tesla so in terms of tesla i'm very bullish very very bullish but there is that chance that this escalation could happen in this Israeli war. We could get involved and the markets could sharply pull back. That is always something to be watching. That is why I've been reporting on the situation each and every single day. The major new developments that you need to know for that specific reason. So that is going to do it for this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and source your comments, questions or concerns down below in the comment section. If you guys would like to come trade with us live in real time, come get access to all of the trades that I make every single day. Link down below in the description of this video. You guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.